Snooker is a game that requires incredible precision, dedication and finesse to master. And I guess that's why it's loved by so many people around the world. But what I love about it is how brilliantly it showcases a number of physics concepts. Now the trouble is, I am absolutely terrible at snooker, so I can't really show you anything. But I do know a seven times world champion who can. So the first thing that comes to mind about snooker is collisions, because the name of the game is to get the cue ball to hit the target ball in a very specific way so that it moves into the chosen pocket. When two snooker balls collide, the collision is essentially elastic, which means the kinetic energy of the system is conserved before and after the impact. Similarly, the physical property known as momentum, which equals mass times velocity, is also conserved throughout each collision, which means that you can take all the momentum from the cue ball and transfer it to the second ball. This stems from Isaac Newton's very famous third law of motion, one of the three laws which govern a branch of physics known as classical mechanics. So if I was to bump into this table, I would apply a force to it, and it would apply an equal and opposite force on me. However, because our masses are somewhat different, the table barely moves, but I bounce back, conserving the momentum. With snooker balls, however, their masses are pretty much identical, so you can clearly see momentum being transferred from one to the other. So the cool thing about momentum is that the velocity part of the equation doesn't just deal with speed, but it also takes into account the direction of movement too, which enables you to make really cool angled shots like this. Now if we take a closer look at how the balls behaved, you can see that the angle between them after the collision is a perfect right angle, and this is known as the 90 degree rule. What's happening here is that a portion of the cue ball's original momentum is transferred into the red ball in the direction of the line between the centre of the two balls at the point of impact. Meanwhile, the cue ball shoots off in a direction perpendicular to the red ball. The ball's new velocities, which are shown by the arrows, add up to the cue ball's original velocity, conserving momentum across the collision. So, Stephen, how familiar are you with the 90 degree rule? Uh, not at all. Um, I mean, when you talk about degrees of angles, you're talking a different language. Basically, I see the shot, I see where I want to put the cue ball for the next shot, and I just, I just make the cue ball go there. That's as far, that's as technical as I get. Wow, and that's probably why I will never be any good at this sport, because I just don't <laughs> intuitively feel it. But that was just the simple stuff. Where things get really interesting is when you start adding spin to the ball when you hit it because this adds extra forces that can make for some very physics-defying tricks like this. All right, Stephen, talk me through this wizardry. What are you doing? Well, Liv, the most important ball in the snooker table is a cue ball. Uh -huh. uh, to make breaks, to, you, you've got to be able to control this ball here. Top spin, you're aiming top of the cue ball. Right. Back spin, obviously, below centre, as low as you want to go right hand side, left hand side, and, and, and the difficult thing is in, in a snooker table is to actually hit where you're aiming. That, that, that right. comes down to how well you cue. If you hit it on centre you're adding linear momentum, but you hit it off centre you're also adding a second force, which is a turning force known as torque, um, to also give the ball an angular momentum. Yeah, I, know, I know this. <laughs> this angular momentum needs to be conserved too, which is why the ball bounces off the rail at such a bizarre angle. So what's happening here is that friction is coming into play. After the ball has been hit by Stephen's cue, the only force acting is friction between it and the surface of the table. And because the ball is spinning sideways, it's unable to roll across the table, and so starts sliding across it instead. This creates what is known as kinetic friction, and the direction of that friction affects where the ball goes. As the ball slows down, the rotating frictional force has a bigger effect, making the ball's trajectory curve more. OK, so I guess it's not magic. Tell me about the sweet spot on the ball. What I would determine it is it's maybe uh, just slightly above centre, uh -huh. where you're playing a topspin shot, but you don't really want any lag. You just want the topspin to take effect straight away. You want to carry the natural momentum of the cue ball. So yeah, slightly, slightly above centre. Yeah, because there must be a point on the ball where if you hit it, it makes the ball roll perfectly. 
And interestingly, there's actually a mathematical derivation for it. I'm sure there is. It's nice and simple. It's, uh, it looks like this. Easy peasy. If you say so. Okay, Stephen, talk me through this chalking thing, because whenever I play pool, that is not what I do. Basically, um, snooker players, they, they chalk the, you know, the cue after every single shot. Mm -hmm. They don't need to, but it's, it's kind of like a habit. But what we're doing is we're putting an even, even coating of chalk on the tip. So when we play shots like with extreme spin, you're getting grip on the cue ball. So I guess what's happening is when you're trying to hit these extreme shots, a smaller surface area of the Q-tip is actually making contact with the ball, so it's very important that you have as much friction as possible to get that spin. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I mean, as you can see from my tip, it's kind of rounded. So yeah, so that only a, a part of that tip is actually making contact with the cue ball. So yeah, if you're aiming low and especially down, if you've got no chalk in there yet, you would just, if a golf shot, you just chip the cue ball over. Okay, thank you. So as you can see, snooker is a fantastic way of showcasing some of the laws that govern our physical universe. It's also a great way to flex your mathematical muscles with some geometry. Unless, of course, you're Stephen Hendry, to whom it just comes completely naturally. <laughs>